right, guys, we're going to get started. Um, I just want to welcome you all to an exciting webinar event with our next guest. And at uh, CGMA, we're lucky to have them. Um, he's been creating concepts and illustrations for 12 plus years, working on projects like Hellblade, Maze Runner, Planet of the Apes, Godzilla, and Riddick, to name a few. After working and moving a lot, he came back to Hungary and joined forces with his amazing art director friend to establish a concept art studio dedicated to IP development. Their studio has worked on more than 18 projects, including the Netflix original Love, Death, and Robots, the Alienist series, Colette, and the popular documentary sci-fi series, Mars, as well as a recent trailer for Rainbow Six Siege. Let's give a hearty warm welcome to Mark Molnar, and let me see if I can get this right, Gaspar <laughs> Gombos yeah. at Pixeloid Studio. Uh, Did I get it right? Did I get it right? <laughs> All right. You did it. Man, you I had a lead in that It was the hardest part. Yeah. <laughs> so listen, guys, um, I want to welcome you. Uh, so good to, how are you guys doing, by the way? Oh, oh good. Okay. We, are, we are a bit tired. It's the end yeah. of the day. So we started pretty early today, but it's, it's going all right. Okay, terrific. Well, um, I'm glad to have you. We are glad to have you. Before we get started in our webinar, I just want to thank CG Master Academy for ho hosting this webinar. The CG Master Academy is the leader in online digital arts education and film, animation, and games, and we're thankful for the generous sponsorship. Uh, just a little bit of um, the, um, the rules for what we're wanting to do with the attendees, if you have any potential questions that are related to our topics please use the Q&A button and not the chat areas that is on the Zoom webinar tool set below. We'll do our best to get as many questions as possible as relevant to the discussion. And if time permits, we might have a few minutes at the end for Q&A there. All right, at this point, I'm going to give the reins over to uh, Mark and Gaspar, who <laughs> has some great stuff to share, including uh, their backgrounds and career highlights, some notable projects, and workflow challenges that they face, and also what their class is gonna be about for those who are interested in attending uh, starting in January 25th. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop the share, and this is all about Mark and Gaspar. There we go. There you, you go, guys. Welcome. Hi. Hello, guys. Hi. Hi, everyone. So my name is Mark, and- And I am Gaspar. Whoa! <laughs> So yeah, as uh, Frank mentioned, we uh, actually we met uh, at university. We have uh, we have went to university together. We went here to the Hungarian Design University, and uh, and then we our paths sort of separated. And I went into work more in games, and Garspar went more into advertising and film and animation. And then after about like ten years or something, I mean, we kept in touch and everything, but then we sort of moved into like the same co-working office what what we created and we slowly started sharing uh, like smaller projects and then bigger ones and then like the logical next step seemed to like start our own company and like channel all our freelance works through that basically that's that's how it started i think yeah so we gathered all the connections we have just had and after we try to share as much uh, possible jobs as we had. So we try to mm, keep uh, our attention or we are really try to interest to, to get those kind of jobs, which are mainly illust uh, means illustrative works like storyboarding, uh, illustrative backgrounds we did. We, we actually, we did a lot of uh, Animation, animation backgrounds. backgrounds yeah yeah and and i had some um, advertising uh, jobs layout sketching things keyframes key illustrations and yeah, yeah that's, that's how it started but actually it, it, yeah. it, it picked up pretty quickly like yeah. after after we started because first we just put together our or old works and then uh, just mm -hmm. created a website basically and tried to do projects together and it took about not much like five six months yeah and then uh, it it really it really picked up so and now 
I mean, we didn't really expect that, to be honest. We, we thought it's going to be like a really long process that we're slowly moving from freelance to doing the company full time. But it took only like five, six months. And now there's like a eight, nine of us working in a studio and we were part, we can, we could be part in amazing yeah. projects. Actually, it was a, one of the biggest step when we had to involve somebody as a plus an extra member. Yeah. So we just were step by step growing and, and now we are eight people in house and how oh, we can talk about a lot. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's just, a never ending story. Yeah, so it's a never ending story. So just, we could, we could jump to our, our actual works. All right. Well, we, I, we'd love to kind of see a little bit of the, the highlights if you have. Uh, um, I know. Yeah, you we just we, we thought we're gonna we're gonna share our, our most recent uh, showreel first, and then okay. we can uh, we can talk about uh, the the studio and how how it works and what we are doing, and then move on to on to the actual lecture or the course what we are going to do with you guys and not CGMA. That's all right. Perfect. Excellent. So, yeah. here we go. That's awesome. Thank you. I didn't realize the scope of the work that you guys cover. It seems like a lot of, um, like concepts is, is a big umbrella. Uh, so yeah. within it, there's a lot of different parts. Um, and I, and I got to believe that maybe that would have been the reason why you decided to, to go with starting a studio. Because uh, you, if you're starting as a concept artist, even within concept, there's a ton of dis yeah. different disciplines. So it's interesting that you have literally yeah, the spectrum it's, it's probably coming uh, from our freelance background because uh at least based on my experience you have to be really versatile if you are a freelancer especially if you are starting out so you have to i'm not saying to be like jack of all trades but you have to know a bit of everything uh, to to get hired and uh, and especially after we joined forces uh so we both like, uh, let's say, environment design and keyframe design, but Gaspar is much more experienced and in storyboarding, for example, and doing keyframes. And, and on the other hand, I'm more experienced in character and creature design. So both have our strengths. And, uh, but we like all aspects of, of, uh, of this uh, sort of entertainment design field. So, and... Uh, we consciously try to direct the studio this way. So we are still doing uh, a lot of things. And as a studio, we can also cover like a bigger project from doing all sorts of design tasks from storyboarding to character design or costume design or prop design. Do you guys cast when you hire uh, for specific roles or do you uh, cast uh, people who have maybe two or three different skill sets within a uh, concept? Well, it depends when, I, when, when we hire uh, uh, somebody for 
in-house work, we look more for versatility because we really like to share uh, the tasks inside the studio. So most of the time, uh, at least two people is working on one task or one artwork. So we are we are try to we try to share all the artworks because that's that's how you can get the most creative juice into into every every artwork every piece. But if we are working with uh, freelancers, we are working with freelancers from time to time. Then we look for like really specific, specific artists, 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 and with really yeah. specific skills because. If somebody is outside the studio, then we have to know he's going to deliver exactly what we are after because, especially because we, in movies, we usually work with daily deliveries, so we can't afford to not hit the daily delivery. And it's, it's, it's kind it of makes, risky thing. It makes yeah. it a bit more risky to work with freelancers, so that's why we, we look for really specific people. Yeah. And there are a lot of things we can handle here in, uh, in the house. So usually we can manage yeah, most, 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 of, most of the, the, product, the tasks yeah. we, we just have. So uh, the question I was going to ask is um, IP development. You call the class IP development for a reason, uh, you know, and yeah. IP stands for, if I understand this correctly, intellectual property development. Yeah, that's right. It's an all encompassing title. Um, you know, that seems to take on a different, um, uh, way of approaching and thinking about problem solving for your clients. Can yeah, you that's through a little bit about uh, the way you uh, think about that. Yeah, we, uh, uh, well, actually, when we started to think about the, the course and we, we started to talk this about, uh, this, about this course with many, uh, because the first idea was to, to create like a studio mentorship course and we thought, uh, probably what we what we are the best in is uh, like uh, problem solving specifically for a story from the storytelling and narrative point of view. So what we usually do is or have to do in in most of the projects what we are doing uh, uh, is uh, not just uh, answer a software problem or create one environment in 3D, but more like uh, design. Uh, in context, uh, design costumes, design environments, design keyframes and context. And most of the time we have to cover uh, more tasks in, in a, during a production. So not just uh, doing uh, creatures, but also doing the environments, also uh, helping out the design team with, with certain visual ideas, what can shape the story as well. So that's... Yeah, I'm not sure. Well, that's what you meant, but yeah, and I guess that's always uh, probably client-driven because sometimes clients yeah. come in with uh, clear ideas of of sort of a global direction for what they want to do, and then other times they're looking to you um, to fill in a lot of their blind spots. I imagine. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it depends on the production. We, we most most of the time we work with uh, directors, production designers, and art directors. Yeah. Or maybe sometimes, DOP, maybe. Yeah, director sometimes recording. director of yeah. photography, uh, or or sometimes producers and writers on the during the pitch phase, during the pitch development, and that's that's also what we do to help uh, to help people out uh, during the pitch de development when they only got like a script or like a treatment of a story, and we help them sell their idea through a visual presentation. And basically, that's that's really what we are going to do in during the course as well, to to develop a pitch together with the students. Yeah, actually, we would like to um, to create a, a pitch uh, package which is working in a live um, uh, an existing uh, industry, so we can collect all the things and it's gonna be in the same style and gonna be in the same uh, visual language. Uh, hopefully, so uh, this, this that would be the main aim of this course. Yeah. So it will be in one under one umbrella the all the stuff we have just done. Yeah, probably so that's that's what is going to make it a bit more unique compared to the other courses because we are not focusing 
on on a software or we are not focusing on like just character design or just environments uh, but we are going to cover basically everything you need but from the point of uh, storytelling and visual narrative terrific so i guess then uh, if you're going to work on ideas if, if one of the reasons you want to take this class this is a chance for someone to really work on the quality of their ideas uh, rather yeah. than technique of concept which is his own thing you know uh, a lot of people were moving from uh, Photoshop to procreate you know in the process yeah. of getting a lot of stuff and it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a but that's its own topic and, and yeah exactly it's very I, mean, uh, I don't think software really does matter to be honest and uh, and actually that's why we, we decided to first we were thinking about to, to do like a mixed course uh, using both 2D and 3D softwares because in-house we are using both. But then we decided to, uh, to do all the demos just in 2D because that, that keeps us focused more on the, like the thinking design process thing. and the design process behind, behind the, the artworks and not getting lost in like rendering times and, and the technical aspects of, of things. So students can, can of course, use uh, 3D softwares if they want to during the course, but we... But it's we, not compulsory. So. Yeah, but it's not compulsory, so... My question that I have, and, and I just wanted you to kind of think about, like, um, I guess in, in your work history so far, which clients uh, were the most fun to work with for IP development for you guys? And, and why? And do you have any samples of some of that work that you might be able to share now that maybe some of them are already on the air? Oh, well, I, I, would, I wouldn't say like clients, like companies or projects, but more like uh, people, like production designers, yeah, yeah. I think. So like- Dave Warren. Yeah, Dave, Dave Warren was uh, one of the best, the, the production uh, designer of Emerald City. Uh, yeah. He was also the production designer of uh, the Imaginarium of Dr. Parnassus. And uh, he, he was he a was, super great guy. Yeah, and, and it was a really in, a, in our uh, early time. So it yeah. was the first of yeah, well, one of well, our first, first big projects. Big job. Yeah. So, so it, it was, was really sweet. great. And he's a super funny guy as well. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, probably the other best one was Mara. Mara, Mara Pershu. Yeah. Uh, he was the production designer of Alienist. Uh, and she, she was also nominated for for Emmys and um, what's, what's that, Art, Art Directors Guild Award. Yeah. He won Art Directors Guild Award for the production designer of The Alienist. Mm -hmm. Actually, we also won. Yeah. So that's good. <laughs> yeah, with Will. She was, she was really good. Yeah, Don't with Will, Will, Will Jones. Yeah, so the- Yeah, so it's more, more people, I think. Yeah. But if, if I think the, the we, we kind of like all projects because every project is different and and it also uh, keeps us fresh to do different projects, like even parallel sometimes. Yeah. And I think it was really a uh, warrior's uh, task. There are a lot of different kinds of uh, tasks to solve yeah. in this project, because we were doing uh, uh, concept art for environment, and prop design and storyboards, and we were get got involved to to VFX design yeah, as well. Aliens. And so we really like if there are a lot of things or a lot of different things are happening. So this is what is really keeps us as fresh as we are. <laughs> <laughs> not not now, but, <laughs> but like usually. at 9 p.m. But yeah. As opposed to tired and, and just ridiculously burnt <laughs> out, that could be the, the other version of that too. No, that's, I get it. No, it's, it's always interesting too, because I mean, it really is a people business. Um, and, yeah, absolutely. You know, you, at the level that you're working, um, those relationships are, are critical um, to the success of a project. Um, how many people do you, you wind up working? Is it usually one main person that you kind of are dealing with or are you kind of dealing with a, an entire crew of uh, people depending on what part of the uh, movie or TV show you're working with? Like do you, you work with the costume department? Do you work with the models? Yeah. Well, we, usually, we usually work with the, 
how do, how do you say that with the heads of the departments so we, we usually work with the director or with the production designer mm -hmm. so we usually work with the main guys but we also have to work together with uh, with other people as well of course so sometimes we get uh, like architecture models of sets uh, from the art department or we got uh, like material samples from the costume department and things like that. So, but basically, or sort of, how do you say that supervisor or boss is the production designer or the director. Do you, um, I know that um, you have, the, you showed me some uh, samples of your work in the past. I was going to ask if um, you had any examples from any uh, of the recent shows. Like I, 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 I love the fact that you worked on, you know, love, death, and robots. Um, how was that a project to work on? Um, the yeah, that was, that was a great project. We worked together with Digit Pictures on uh, on that, and we did have uh, like a full pre-production for for that short. Actually, even if the short was only like uh, fifteen minutes or maybe less, but but we worked on it just on the pre-production part for like five six months, and we literally created like hundreds of images so yeah uh, so when the time gets there we can publish a, a whole book about that <laughs> and no not really but but yeah it's always a shame that you you are not allowed to show all the works what you have done during the projects you know um, do you have any of the samples that you are able to show just for our audience? Yeah, yeah. actually, we can we can move on. We, we prepared a bit of a slideshow just and yeah. talk a bit about uh, how how we uh, how we work as a studio and what kind of things are we doing. Terrific. And uh, and then uh, move on to the actual course during. Uh, through a few of our work samples like picked from our most recent projects. Okay. Let's see if there are any questions. I don't see any questions from uh, the audience yet, but this would be a good time to, uh, for the attendees, uh, if you have any questions for uh, Mark or Gaspar, um, to uh, go ahead and put them in the Q&A window if you have any uh, and if uh, we can we might be able to work them in for the webinar or at the tail end so don't be shy also if you are interested in the actual class itself um you know i'm gonna post for the chat um uh the class link in case people are interested in more about um okay so can you see the the screen share Is yes we can see we can see it Okay. Is it better this way? Is it, or is it the yeah. same? Yes, you, we're actually getting the whole screen now. So yeah, perfect. Perfect. Okay, so so yeah, these are a few projects what we worked on. Uh, some of them are still not out, like the Witcher uh, series and uh, and some uh, some other one. We also worked on the second season of The Alienist. What is not out? Uh, Jack Ryan just just came out. And we also did work on Rocketman, was just uh, nominated for three Golden Globes. Love that and robots, Rainbow Six Siege, Mars. Just a few highlights of, of the past two years. Um, and here, here are a few like samples. Uh, can we, is it, is it the right? Just a few samples by what to do. Like these are different keyframes. From the past years. So so this is just to show the, the process what we do. So we we work basically in film animation and games. And uh, you can see here uh, uh, what's uh, what kind of task are we doing? So we're doing our direction, storyboarding, keyframe design during the early phase. We do most of our work during the pre-production and the production phase. So we're doing character and costume designs, creature designs, environments, props, etc. And uh, we do that's that 
takes up about 80% of our work, I would say, okay. and the rest, 20%, is uh, post-production and VFX design. So we are not a post-production house, so we are not actually doing the, the VFX work, but just creating concepts for more for VFX companies. And we also help out in the distribution part, so doing promotional illustrations, marketing materials, and uh, sometimes eye direction and, and design of, uh, of ads and ad campaigns. Uh, some of our clients uh, from the past four years, uh, uh, like Netflix, uh, Amazon Prime, we did projects for uh, Lionsgate and Universal. At the moment, we are working on a series uh, for HBO and also for Paramount. So exciting times, actually. We are. It's funny because this looks. If you look at this, it's it looks really impressive, but in reality, we're just a really small studio with eight creatives. So. So yeah, that's pretty much what we are doing. And uh, let's talk a bit about the course and we can show some of our work, what is related to the course and the actual lectures, what we are going to do. I think that's, that would be the best, right? Yeah. So of course is IP development for production, uh, where we, uh, so the idea is we, we gonna pick a story ourselves and the students also has to pick, uh, pick a story, uh, like a script part, and, uh, or bring their own story and develop that. And through our sample story, we're gonna show how we are preparing a, a full pitch presentation. So basically pitch development, uh, in our case, covers everything from the first reference gathering till the uh, preparation of the final presentation. So we're gonna talk about uh, creating mood boards. Uh, we're gonna do uh, a bit of character and costume design, or, or if it's necessary, the students also can pick creature design. Uh, we can talk about environment design and uh, prop design, what is uh, related to the characters, and uh, then move on to keyframe development. So we're gonna touch base on storyboarding, and develop uh, a few story beats to final keyframes at the end. And from all this, what we, what we create during the 10 weeks course, we're gonna prepare uh, a full presentation package, what you can use to, as a portfolio piece or present it to producers or eye directors, basically whatever you feel or however you wanna take your project further. Uh, so the creation of mood boards is, is pretty much, pretty much uh, uh, gathering references, but we are going to talk about why it's important and uh, how you can do this effectively and how you can break it up, how you can break up the script into, into um, how do you say, like visual Visuals. assets. Yeah. And uh, work based on, based on that and how you can organize those uh, to make them presentable. These are actually mood boards, what we created for, uh, for the secret for, for Love, Death and Robots. And uh, then we are going to move to character design. These are some early thumbnail sketches, what I've done for Hellblade. Uh, and we are going to move to character and costume design, uh, doing like rough sketches and line works and color blockings. And then from there, uh, we are also going to move into more detailed characters uh, from that point and uh, do a bit of uh, costume design. Uh, I'm so I'm showing various samples from with dif from different projects and different styles just to get a range of what you can develop. So you can really I mean students can can really pick what the, what they want to do. So it can be fantasy, sci-fi, or whatever. So these are costume designs from Robin Hood, the recent Robin Hood movie, and uh, these are from Rapid Man, where we helped design all the costumes for Julian Day. 
the custom design, right? And then, uh, yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean a, a little bit of a lag on my end. Uh, we had a question from one of our uh, attendees, uh, Stephanie okay. Claire. She she's a, a writer director working on Yay Sci-Fi or Ya Sci-Fi, um, and uh, she wanted to know if you had to be knowledgeable in CGI or software to take um, the course, and um, if you had any insight there. Well, uh, I think Photoshop is uh, is not, is really necessary to handle Photoshop on a, on a working level because uh, we we are not going to have time to go, to get into like software knowledge and and talk about using the software. But other than Photoshop, we we don't require anything else. I think. Awaken. Yeah, yeah. awake tablet, so the graphic tablet, but. Yeah. Okay. That everything is doable in Procreate or any or any similar program. What can what can handle photos or drawing or anything? But I think uh, uh, a basic skills in in drawing and uh, and painting and painting yeah. is, uh, Actually, is is really uh, handy. What is <laughs> on the screen is, is quite heavy in three D, so that's a bit, bit uh, misleading. Uh, we don't need uh, any 3D software knowledge for this for the uh, course. For the course. Mm -hmm. What is important is, is uh, to mention we have a sample script actually, yep. and we go further on on that. And uh, basically, uh, we will uh, talk about that and how we can approach visual um, anything which is visual based on the script. So it's like a guide guideline. We have will be there and uh, and we have a known uh, mini story and sample so no i just want to clarify it because i'm not sure we mentioned it in the beginning but yeah, okay. I, think, I think yes oh, okay. i'm not sure i think we answered the, the question yeah so i i mean draw, basic uh, knowledge in drawing painting and in in a digital painting software is uh, I think is mandatory. Yeah, that's all. Uh, we have a couple of other questions, but why don't you keep keep on going? I'm I'm gonna look for places to bring uh, some of those questions. Okay, sure. Okay. To we can answer every, everything in during the Q and A session. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. So and then after that, we we are going to get into a bit uh, in prop design. Mm -hmm. uh, so these are a few samples from the different props what we created for different shows. These were for National Geographic and uh, the robot monkey was for uh, Emerald City. Emerald City. Uh, and then move on to environment design, uh, focusing on one part uh, or one sequence from, from the script and uh, do a bit of thumbnail development to explore compositions and do a bit of like uh, analytical environment design. So like how you can create maps, uh, quick maps to understand the, the space and the environment where the scene is happening. And then based on that, we are going to move into thumbnailing. And then at the end, we are going to create a more detailed black and white sketch. And from that, uh, we're going to do some color and lighting experiments. So how you can experiment with various palettes and various lighting scenarios for your scene. And, uh, and then move on to like a final environment piece, what we are going to create. Or the student has to create at least one finished environment piece. Uh, and then uh, starts the, the final like story sort of part uh, of the course. We are going to start with storyboarding. Uh, we are going to require the students to do more like uh, shooting boards, but it's like this, what I'm showing now. So it's more simple black and white boards, focusing on the overall composition and action and camera angles. Uh, but they can, but we're also going to talk about the techniques, how they can bring it further to more like presentation, to do like presentation boards and more like uh, flashy uh, presentation storyboards or concept story boards. beats or concept boards. Uh, 
the uh, demand for just because uh, I noticed that there was a big difference between the the rough black and white sketches and what you're showing as the final. Have yeah. have the expectations from directors over the last ten? Well, actually, actually, it's a day, but I think the better if you talk about this because yes. it really depends on the person. Okay. Because some of the directors would like to have yeah. just. Uh, more uh, versions for 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 sequences and and really would like to have uh, really fast uh, back and forth rounds and feedback rounds and rough sketches and some of them would like to to know a bit more about the environment the lighting and and they need a bit more eye catchy um, samples in yeah, style. and style and i think it also depends on on, on the who you or, or what's the final goal with the storyboards? Yeah. So usually these more rough ones are for for Fine. the director yeah. and and the DOP to figure out what works, what, because they have an image in mind, but that not doesn't necessarily work all the time. So they would like to figure out a more complex scene with all the camera movements and everything. But sometimes they they prepare a certain scene for like presentation for the producers or for the for the channel, and that's that's where the more fleshy presentation uh, storyboards or, or concept boards come come in yeah and it's it it could uh, it uh, it depends on uh for example in this case uh, we have an actual location so we have photo uh, photographies and and we made this ma mashed up photography style so uh in this case we have we don't have to think a, a lot on location but more we yeah can because focus we already, on the, the the mood and the light the mood and, and the action and, and the action uh, and the croppings and composition so so maybe this, this yeah that, yeah that that would be the, the answer for the question yeah and uh, there is one one other uh like storyboard uh style what we don't show here and that's like yeah, really the, the 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 yeah the real fleshy presentation boards for advertising because like those are like super colorful and really fleshed out and super detailed because usually that's how they uh present the concept of uh, yeah press an ad spot for for the client yeah and they are marketing guys so they don't really have a kind of uh an imagination for so a line art is not enough for them yeah, to so they, understand they, how yeah. it would be. Scary. They exactly has to have to see what the, what the ad is going to look like at the end. So, at the end, so yeah. that's that's also like a, another another step. In so the it's a natural, thing. really really cheesy, really uh, really colorful. Thing. Yeah, with a lot of lens flares, flares. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> lens flares and rim lights everywhere. <laughs> Okay. Great. Thank yeah. you. So yeah, after that and um, the final uh, stages, we we are going to pick uh, three to four uh, uh, story beats, uh, what we established on the storyboard, and we are going to move into uh, uh, detailing those out, like coloring those up, and and ending with a with a final keyframe. What's uh, so? I'm showing a few few samples from some of our projects. This is what keyframe what you've done for um, for the secret war. Those are awesome. Uh, for uh, the new Dark Siders trailer, was just came out. Hmm. Some for the also recently published Jack Ryan. I just finished the series. Oh yeah. Yeah, the second season was really good. Awesome. Yeah. So yeah, and this is pretty much the last step what I'm what I'm showing. So this is ideally this is something what you end up with at the at the end of the course. It depends on the energy and time you put in, of course. So ideally you end up with uh with a full presentation, what consists of the mood boards, character designs, prop designs, creatures, if you want to do creatures environment designs and a few keyframes what 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 covers your story or your mini story this is a very comprehensive um class then because 
you're literally weaving in the philosophy of the story uh, to all these choices. Each of these are their own separate disciplines, and yet they... Yeah, that's, that's the plan. Of course, we... we yeah. uh, I mean, uh, I have to mention the downside. So we we are not going to have the time to really dig deep into any of the topics. So like environment design characters. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna approach everything from the from the storytelling perspective and from the pitch perspective. So trying to tell how how this works in the industry, what you have to show from from your story to to ideally sell your script and sell your idea and keep visually it a, keep it in a design coherent language. yeah and 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 yeah, yeah and, and, and build language. in build it yeah. like a cohesive visual language for for the whole thing so this is uh, like something like this what we have done for love that robots and this is sharing the same process with another of our projects where we did storyboarding keyframes uh lighting studies, prop designs, character designs, costumes, etc. Do you um, have different, uh, I guess in the, in the sense of the way business is done, uh, some of this looks like work that could be done to try to get the green light for production. Yeah, exactly. that's, uh, that's, that's pitch development, exactly. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's mm -hmm. what I'm saying, so. Yeah. So, because there's, you know, once you're in production, it's then it just gets even more so on this front. But this is very comprehensive uh, way of selling an idea, uh, which is pretty impressive. Um, so this is exciting. Uh, I'm glad this course is is being offered. Well, thank uh, you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we have a, a question uh, from MC, I guess, um, and they yeah. asked, uh, "Can you discuss a little bit about how you go about seeking projects or work from clients such as Netflix?" Uh, well, uh, to be honest, we are not really seeking projects anymore. So, <laughs> not really. Already. <laughs> well, not really. But <laughs> so what, what? What happens is uh, what happens is uh, they are approaching us to to be in projects. So that's what, what's happening. I mean, it it really started from uh, from the connections what we gathered through our freelance years probably and then after after we started to work as a as a company and we started to build a portfolio usually what 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 started to happen is like a, one production designer took us to his next project uh, or or recommended us to another production designer or another director so it's it's all about it's really about connections yeah i think and luck <laughs> yeah i hate to say that but it's but it's true so it's and and sometimes they they find our websites or or our station but that's that's more rare yeah i think mostly we are we are living from our connections and and we have a lot of uh, incoming uh, movies sh uh, shooting here in budapest so uh yeah we we are in the system yeah and I think we uh, we 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 j we got basically lucky. We were in a good place at the right time because uh, we were really thinking about uh, starting the company in London originally, and uh, but then decided to start it in Hungary, and that's that's when uh, that was when the movie industry started to boom in Hungary because they built like two or three huge studio complexes uh, close to Budapest. And so a lot of movies are coming to shoot here. A lot of TV series from Netflix and on everything, everything. So, so we work for them. That's that's one part, like about one third of our work, and one third we are working directly with the with the clients, with the international clients like Paramount or HBO, and another one third is like uh, various, like everything, like in a shop, doing illustrations. Yeah. Marketing uh, arts, storyboards. Marketing arts, storyboards, advertisements. advertisements. Um, so we also don't like just just an example. We we worked for uh, an advertisement agency in New York, and but we but then like a month later we worked on the new Mazda campaign yeah. for an agency in Berlin, and then we worked on a Paramount production was what was shooting in South South America. 
So it's all like a big mix, <laughs> really. Just turned off my, uh, we had an ambulance coming by <laughs> <laughs> the outside. So I just, I'm muted, I apologize. Um, we have a question from Emra. Actuna, yeah. uh, and yeah. she's a big fan of Pixeloid for you guys. Oh, thank you. She's been work, watching your work, uh, and um, she asked if, uh, do you search for freelancers by a, a, a project basis, and also, are there people working for you guys remotely full-time, or, you know, like, mm -hmm. I know you mentioned no. that, you haven't missed that, but... Uh, you know? uh, we have uh, we mentioned that uh, earlier. So we have uh, full time artists in house, and uh, we also we only work with freelancers on a project by project basis because usually we need really specific people with really specific tasks. What we what we cannot handle in house. Usually we can we can handle most of the stuff in house because uh, which usually. <laughs> <laughs> Well, sometimes we we uh, we took on a bit too many projects. I mean, at least that's what happened during the summer. Yeah. So in other words, you have a good problem to have. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, and you're like telling. Just everything came together because you know how it is. So sometimes, sometimes people approach us and they say, "Okay, this is here is the school project, and are you available?" And we say, yeah, "Okay, yeah, of course," and then. One month, two months, three months, and nothing happens, and it just goes. And then you say yes Everybody for another project, and for another project, and, and then gone. suddenly there's like a flood, everything in the same time, like. <laughs> so how do you manage that? Because I mean, that's an interesting thing. You got to put these airplanes on the runway, basically. All these projects. <laughs> I mean, yeah. it's pretty much like all right, whoever like you know cuts the check first, you know, and and starts uh, sending. You, I mean. Yeah, I think from a, when you go from being an individual contributor as a concept artist to a business, you have yeah. completely different concerns. And I yeah, mean, right. can you talk a little bit about the headspace uh, and, and how you have to change uh, the way you think about your work, um, client management and time management. Yeah, exactly. I mean, time management and, and, and just the whole like, project man management takes up a lot of time actually especially especially usually we have at least three or four projects running at the same time so some of them are smaller uh, some of them are bigger projects we, we actually like bigger I mean I'm in bigger I mean I mean longer projects because then we can we can plan plan ahead uh, and uh, so usually uh, but the average uh, film projects in terms of pre-production usually takes up around between like between four four to six months yeah usually that's that's an average that's an average and uh, and illustration projects usually run four weeks four to six weeks yeah but we haven't got uh, daily deliveries in terms yeah. of uh, illustration works so we can play chess with them i mean the deadline <laughs> so it's not as urgent so we have to uh, as, as, at first we have to prioritize what is the main yeah we, all, we usually prioritize based on the length on, of of the projects and so it's 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 not really just the first comes first serves kind of thing uh, but also we have to I think there are like three factors, the, the client, uh, the project itself, yeah. and the, the, length, the length and the scope of the project also, because I mean, the best scenario is if, uh, if a project books us for, let's say, six months, and we have to do like prop design, costume design, uh, keyframes, work on storyboards, so work a lot of things for the same production. That's the most ideal, because then uh most of most of our in-house team can work on the same project in the same time and everybody understands the project yeah and we we have a dedicated lead to our, on one project on every on every project yeah, yeah each of them so so that makes easy easier the thing i mean it's it's quite it could be a bit messy because <laughs> we yeah yeah especially with a lot of small projects yeah 
that that can happen. But <laughs> we try to we try to manage. It's 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 funny because I mean we we are we are coming from an artistic background, so we are not really good in like Excel sheets and and like super time management and and all that jazz. But we are growing into it slowly. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we have to. The good thing is we we uh, we learned a lot about like contracts and the legal side and how to how to manage your own time <clears throat> during your freelance period, and that's what we try to do in the in the company as well. So the whole studio is basically an artist driven studio, and that's what what we would really like to keep. Yeah, it's the kind future of well. thing. So uh, I guess the other question then is like, who are your like, I mean, heroes artistically? Like who are the people that sort of were like, well, in your early part of your careers or even now, who are the people that get you excited about doing this kind of work? Whoa, there are so many good guys. I'm, I'm honestly, I'm afraid of going up on you know, to, to our yeah. station because they are scary. <laughs> I mean, seriously, there there are just too many, too many like like really cool artistic guys. So I can't, I I can't even even mention mention <laughs> like one name because there's yeah. so many. Who was it? Maybe uh, when you were growing up, though, like you know, maybe it was you know, maybe the because I think uh, even in our business, like when I was uh, an animator, uh, there weren't nearly as many people doing it yeah. back then as there are now. It's just our field has grown exponentially. Uh, and so, yeah, you know, like for me, you know, on the concept side, it might have been uh, H.R. Geiger for Creatures, uh, or it yeah. might have me. It, yeah, honestly, for, for me, it was probably like, uh, because I, I started like doing concept art back in the like conceptart.org years when conceptart.org started, and or even before that, because there, was, there wasn't really anything, not even no on DVDs, just, uh, and... Uh, there was this forum called Cegium, and where they like Spark and and uh, Levy Pinerfi and guys like that started to post up speed paintings, and I was always always lurking there. And of course, like Craig Mullins was one of the one of the first yeah. seed meat, like. Yeah. But there are there are a lot of really really cool guys now, so it's really hard to to mention. Yeah. I really like Lip Comerella, who has abstractish, more abstract thing. And more stylized. Yeah, more stylized. He's also a super yeah. nice guy. Super nice guy, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, we have a lot of inspirational guys. Do you have a, a personal uh, style that you, you like to work in that's different than what you do for clients? Like, you know, in terms of your, either your digital art or your, maybe your... Maybe yes, but you have a good time. <laughs> in other words, that's a tricky that's a one. Good problem to have. <laughs> no, that's good to hear. Um, yeah, actually, Gaspar, he really likes to 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 paint in a more abstract, more abstract and more like sort of graphic uh, images. And I'm, I'm, I'm more the painterly guy. But I think if 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 we would work just for ourselves, we wouldn't do like the super realistic. No. Uh, stuff no, what no, we what no, we do no. for for clients yeah yeah some but, more experimental ones but actually we uh, but it was also like a conscious decision to go in this direction because uh, uh, we also even even if uh, they are like multiple artists in the studio and if you if you know them in person you can recognize each each of their work if you but but we want to represent the style as the studio style. So it's no matter who is, who is doing the artwork, we are, we are trying to set sort of a style and quality bar for the studio. Yeah. That's good to know. Cause I mean, you know, when you're working as a group, I mean, the, having done cleanup animation, I mean, we had to basically unite 18 different yeah. animators drawings and make them look like one artist drew those. <laughs> Which is yeah, well, well, that's the goal, and I think it's the is the same thing. Uh, so if 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 a client uh, approaches a freelancer, it approaches a studio the same way. He want to know what he's going to expect, what he's going to get at the end of the day, and if you can provide uh, a certain style or or sort of a 
signature style then then he knows what what he's what he can expect or what he's he, he, he's going to get yeah but it's a bit more difficult in our way because in because we are a multiply artists yeah 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 and, and we have to set up i mean the leader lead uh, art guys has to set up yeah, that's true. what is the quality and what is the mood and what is the the style of the output stuff so yeah but, yeah, but if I think you, we have it. It's no, a no, no. I'm just, I'm just saying that. Of course, we, we have to adapt to certain projects. Like, for example, the Dark Siders was a totally different yeah, than yeah, what, yeah, what sure. we usually do. Mm -hmm. But, but if you look through our portfolio, that everything is sort of in one general direction. So there yeah, are, yeah, sure. So I'm more, I'm more thinking about that. And, and of course, or like studio project is an, is is a totally is different a thing yeah but yeah. it's on but it's a coherent style yeah. yeah yeah does the client ever uh help you get out of your lane in in that way maybe like uh or do you kind of match your sort of your client's expectations to your work style or did they just go to another group i guess my question is if you've had a situation where a client asked for a different style that was outside of what the studio makes do you make that adjustment? Oh, uh, yeah, of course, if you can. Mm -hmm. we, right. we definitely try. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes uh, it happened a very few times, so it's very rare, but sometimes uh, it, it's just not a match. So it's simply we just, we just cannot do that particular style, what the, what the client is after. It happens. Okay. It's a rare thing. So we do like stylized illustration as well. and and uh, not just this super photo real thing uh, like movie thing but yeah but we are as as we are getting more experience we can we see when when gonna be a mismatch yeah in advance and, yeah and usually usually we tell them in advance that look this is just not our not our thing you know even if it's even if it's a, it's it's an exciting project it's better to Sometimes it's better better to turn down a project than to try it and and have a bad experience and or or leave each other with a with a bad taste. Yeah. You know. Sometimes we are providing uh, sample arts. Yeah. What is meets with our um, impression or with our so with our style, so he can or, or they they can see what we can provide and what is the style, mm -hmm. what matches to us or to them. We have one question left uh, from, uh, I guess it's uh, Bilal uh, Lanya. Uh, mm -hmm. And she says she, she loves your work and wanted to ask how you come up with the ideas of creatures and environments. Do you guys do, I mean, obviously you started with a ton of references, but um, do you ever like, uh, like off to the side, make things up or maybe try to do stuff for yourselves? I mean, this might be sort of, tied into, do you have enough time to even work on uh, personal projects uh, outside the studio just to maybe sandbox uh, different techniques uh, or different ways of working? Uh, so to answer the first part of the question, yes, we, we, we always start with uh, gathering references based on uh, the client's needs. And then uh, I ideally, there's an experimental phase and this, there's always a back and forth with the client and that's how we progress and that's how a design evolves. And, um, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, the second part was, uh, yes, we still do like personal works, although we, we don't have much time. Uh, what we started is uh, we started like uh, studio projects, what we, can't tell much about just yet, but it's uh, we are working on it for a year. more than a year, like fourteen months or yeah. something. And but we are really hope that we can share some some stuff soon. Yeah, it's an experimental one. It's an experimental, but it's a bit bigger than we expected it. <laughs> but <laughs> so it, 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 yeah, it, 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 it takes time. Yeah, but we we are doing that in our like spare time beside all all the other projects. So it's. Yeah. So it's a bit hard, but it's, it's getting there slowly. And, uh, <laughs> and 
what you ask is is yeah we all we always uh, experimenting with new techniques like uh trying out different like 3d softwares and uh always try to find what's what can work in our production workflow and what can make it uh, faster and uh, more effective i would say more effective not faster faster is not the best word uh so we are I mean, we are using a lot of softwares actually. I mean, we use ZBrush, we use SketchUp, we use Blender, Modo, uh, 3D Code, whatever. A lot of yeah. like Oct uh, for rendering Octane, Keyshot, mm -hmm. EV. Uh, we use Photoshop, of course. Gaspar also uses Procreate sometimes. Uh, yeah. So a lot of uh, a lot of things we also use uh, uh, Oculus Medium VR. Uh, we just started to experiment with uh, with uh, uh, three, Maya Maya. Lassie uses Maya. Yeah. Uh, and V-Ray. and we also started to experiment just now with uh, with Unreal, the the VR editor part of Unreal. So using Unreal in VR mode and assembling stuff there for as a base for concepts so things like that yeah we also try to find new ways to we're trying to evolve. refresh our minds with uh, uh, we have in our lectures weekly about uh, we have some topics design topics and and we are keeping like a half an hour speech yeah it's like an internal internal like an internal lectures, lectures every wednesday yeah so we are trying to keep or or mind and a fresh way so terrific well speaking so, of fresh i, I don't want to defresh in you by keeping <laughs> up any later uh than you've been i know on your end it's uh got to be what 10 o'clock now yep. 10 PM? yeah after 10 p.m so i just i just want to use this as an opportunity to uh thank you uh both uh for taking the time oh, to share a little you. bit of the so I hope it was it was okay. I hope it was informative for all the participants. And yeah. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Yeah. And I hope you guys in class. You bet. Let me uh, just uh, just say uh, um, just on behalf of the CG Society and CGMA, we want to thank Mark and Gashper, uh, Pixeloid Studios, for this amazing past hour plus of time. And um, anyway, if you guys are interested in the class that they're going to be teaching. Uh, it starts um, January 25th um, of this coming 2020. So uh, if you guys are interested, I put the link for the course uh, for you guys who might be interested. Um, and if you have any other questions uh, that you want to ask about anything with regards to CGMA, I'm going to send you the other link. All right. Oops. And uh, I just truncated it. So I just uh, go ahead here. Here you go. I, th I think I just cut that link off. There we go. And uh, that's for the attendees that made the time in their lives to join us for this special event. So we want to thank you uh, for both coming. And on behalf of CGMA and the CG Society, we're signing off. Thank you again, guys. Thanks for having thank us, you. Frank. Take care. Have a good one. Yeah.